Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my backyard. Today we are going to be making this pergola and this is a project I've been wanting to do for a while. I was originally thinking about doing some timber framing and things like that, but I had the wood on hand and needed to get into it. So today we're going to be using these things with cords called power tools. Ooh. Welcome to my backyard. This is where we're going to be building the pergola, and isn't it a great spot? Most of this lumber is actually stuff that has been reclaimed from a uh, deck that was torn up uh, a neighbor recently had and gave me all this lumber. I was like, yes, great. Um, I had to buy a couple other pieces, the 6x6 the six six for the legs, and then uh, some 2x12s, 24 foot long, um, are the main beams. But the rest of it is uh, stuff that I got for free, basically. So the first thing I want to do is lay out where all these are going to intersect. We have the uh, the secondary beams, which are the ones I'm working on right now, that are going to get a half lap joint that then saddle well, joints well, onto the 24 uh, foot so long beams. So these need a slot cut out of them. And the easiest way to do that is just to grab the saw and run on down them all. I want these all to be parallel because they'll all be crossing the beams at the same distances. So I'm clamping them all together, evening them all up, and then ripping them all down. Now, uh, having gone through them, I cut either side of the channel I want to chop out. I should have gone back through and, and put in several more curves. It would have made it much easier to remove all that. But I thought, no, I'll just chisel it out like I normally do, like for furniture. But, uh, oh well, you live and you learn. And yes, I am using power tools because I'm not going to go at this with a handsaw. Uh, this was a weekend project to get it done. And it was about uh, one week to uh, one weekend to actually build the structure, another weekend for the for the cover. Now I wanted to make uh, decorative ends on this, and uh, yeah, we're pulling out the power saw again. <laughs> so I went through all uh, 17 of these beams and cut a uh, an angle on the end. I didn't want anything special or curvy. I just wanted something that was the, the right shape. And I, I've been doing this on a lot of my furniture, and I just kind of like that that shape. Now we need to cut out the rest of that notch. So we did the circular saw to chop out either side, and then I can bring out the chisel and chop in from either side to pop out this block. Um, this is, well, normal woodworking right here. <laughs> and it, uh, they come out and then I can come in and clean them all out. I wanted to get a nice clean joint on here so that they all fit in well. Um, and it was, it was important to, to gang cut these all together so that all of these slots are relationally the exact same. And so we marched through all these. Uh, it was about uh, what, 15 minutes per board to make all the cuts and clean them out. So 17 of them done. Yeah, it took a little while. Now on to the 6x6 six six legs. Uh, these were 10 foot long and I needed them to be, what, 9.5 foot, so I needed to cut them down. Um, I'm also making a whole pile of slots in them at the top that will then hold the cross beams that get attached to it. So we're cutting off about 18 inches or so on these. And now we need to create the, uh, the, the slots that the beams will rest into these. So we're going to recess the beams into them and then um, bolt them in place. Uh, for the video, I just ended up screwing them in place, but uh, we will be bolting them here eventually. So I wised up on this one. Rather than cutting large slots, we cut a whole bunch of small slots and chipped them out. And the more I did it, the more I used the circular saw to cut more and more slots. And by the end, they were like a quarter inch apart. <laughs> so we did quite a bit. Um, on this particular one, I messed it up and I made several of the saw cuts too deep. So you can see there's a, a chunk that uh, that came out that's a bit too deep on there. Uh, but oh well, they still work the same. But here you can see on this one, a 2x10 will go into it and house down into the joint. And you can see how it will fit down in there and then I can run screws into that. Uh, the 2x12s then go perpendicular to these across the other way. So here's one of the 2x12 slots. And then you can see there's an overlap in between the 2x10 and 2x12, and that's where the housing joints will then connect together. So yes, we're having a little bit of fun cleaning these up really nicely. This is a 2x10 I'm testing it with, but a 2x12 will be what's going in there. Also, I'm going to chamfer off the top corners and make them um, kind of pointy, just to make them a little more decorative. Now we're going to set these up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we need to find a location for this, so I'm actually going to... Oh, wait, no, before we're going to do that, we actually have to cut the 2x12s. Uh, um, yes, we have to cut these as well. We're going to be creating an angle on those as well. There's four of these that need to get chopped up. Um, so we're cutting that same angle on there, and then we are going to be cutting 17 slots in them that the other boards will house down into. So they go down into these one inch, and they go down into the other boards two inches, so there'll be three inches of overlap between them. 
And here I made a lot of saw cuts, which make them very easy to pop out. You can see how these 24 foot beams are, um, well, they're rather large. So I can lay them all down here, find out exactly where I want those two, uh, six by six legs to go. But in order to stand up those six by six legs, I need to actually brace them. So I'm grabbing some of these angled cutoff slats and turning them into stakes, trying not to hit my hatchet on the concrete. Don't hit the hatchet on the concrete. So I'm going very, very soft on them, trying not to over hit them. Or I could just take it over the dirt and hit them and be done. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use these stakes to drive them down in, and this will be what the diagonals can connect to to hold these legs upright. So a couple of these around each one make it a lot easier. Uh, I didn't get it on, uh, on, on camera, but I also got uh, some bases that are held down in, and I used uh, uh, ram set nails to drive them down into the concrete. Um, a couple of the nails were sticking up a little too high, so I had to drill out the bottom of the post. So when they went in, um, it would uh, the nail would then house up into the beam. The brackets then put screws in from the sides, and uh, that will hold it so it's not sliding around, but it won't hold it vertically. And for that, we need to then put in some diagonal bracing to those uh, those spots we have. Kids were very, very useful here. Some of them would give me screws, some of them would hold things for me, and it was kind of ni nice to, to bring them in and show them something different. They were uh, very impressed with how loud the circular saw was. But uh, a little bit of time, we can put in a few braces, and we get these 6 by 6 standing up. Now for the next part, I need to actually put in these 24 foot long beams, and I wasn't about to have the kids help me with that because these are each like uh, probably around 150, 200 pounds a piece. Uh, they're, they're they're relatively beefy things. Eh, not quite 150. They're, they're, they're heavy, though. So those go into the joint, and we're going to put two screws into them temporarily until I uh, come back and put bolts in. There's one of these on either side of the 6x6. Here you can see a one I, I cut the gap a little bit too big, and I'm going to be filling that in with another piece here in a little while. So two of these 24-foot boards, one on either side, then fitting into the 6x6. Now we can bring in the purlins um, and pop those into place. And these took a good bit of working to get down in. Uh, we had to finagle the beams back and forth and get everything wiggling in because they have to house down into the joints and then pop into the 6x6. So with a good bit of persuasion and violent manipulation, they popped down in. You can put some screws in and hold this all in place temporarily. And that's four of the 17. Oh boy. Um, actually, the rest of them went really quickly, especially when you speed up the video. They, they, they go up there really nicely. Um, but the nice thing about these is I don't have anything holding them in place. They just go in and pop into place. Now, I could put screws down into them and hold them down in, um, but they, they actually hold in really, really well. It would take a severe amount of work to, to move them. Now we're going to move on to the awning that will go underneath this. For this, I need um, a whole bunch of these uh, three-quarter inch uh, conduit pipes cut to length. And these will be what hold the awning up in place. So we're going to cut these all to length, bring the kids in to help them out. And then I need to mount them uh, so there will be uh, screw holes that need to go through in pairs. So I'm going to lay them all out and then make a mark on the top of every piece so that all of them have a, a screw, uh, a place for the screw hole. I'm drilling a 1 8 inch hole, and this will be what the screws then um, drive into. Drilling the hole just makes it much easier for the screws to catch. Even though I'm using self-tapping screws, um, they'll, they'll go into this a lot easier. After we've cut into all of this, we're going to spray paint it all blue, uh, because the awning will be blue. Surprise, surprise, I kind of like the color blue. <laughs> but we're going to spray paint these all, make them blue, and that way they disappear when they go into the, the blue fabric. Now, um, we also need to cut uh, diagonal supports so I can get rid of these diagonal supports on the ground. Uh, but before we get into that, I need to hang a hammock because we were going uh, we to have some sun out and I wanted to relax for a little bit. So we put some eye screws in between the legs and, oh, look, we have a hammock. Hung up a couple of these and they just really make it up. I'm going to be putting a few other spots for that. So now back to these diagonal braces. These are going to be kind of temporary or permanently temporary. Uh, I just want to cut uh, braces to go on each corner so I can remove the ones that are connecting to the ground. Um, eventually I'm going to come back through and timber frame something else to uh, to go into them. Uh, but for right now I just need to get this in place. I just don't have any other 6x6s six right now to make those beams. So you can see how they just go up in diagonal and screw them in place. Three screws per end and we're good to go. 
Uh, now back onto the awning. This is the fabric for this, and uh, it is a, it, it's intended for the awnings, and it is a, a UV-protected uh, awning. I need to seam all the edges lengthwise. Um, I have it's what, like 60 feet worth of this um, that needs to be seamed on both sides. I cut it into four panels, um, 10 foot, well, they're um, like a, what, 12 foot long-ish, um, and uh, they need to be seamed. So we're using seaming tape to go all the way along. It makes it a lot easier, so I can just run along it. Also using a UV uh, poly thread that uh, won't, uh, won't rot in the sun outside. So make seams all the way down them, and then we can turn it 90 degrees, and we need to make pipe pockets. And those pipes that we cut earlier need to go uh, all the way across this. So for the pipe pocket, I'm just going to fold it over large enough so that the pipe can fit into it, which was about an inch and a half leaving the open um, on the end there and then run it back run it back down the line. You can see I put a magnet on, the, uh, on the, um, the, the sewing machine there letting me know where the seam is. You can see how the pipe pocket fits in here. Now we have the pipe pockets on the end we need to put pipe pockets in the middle and so I want the pipe pockets uh, I think on mine they were what 30 inches apart um, so uh, no it was a little bit more than that because it was 18 inches to the middle so I folded over the 18 inches and then used a couple paper clips to hold it in place. Uh, normally I would use needles for it, but with this fabric it just didn't work out well. But uh, the paper, paper clips hold it in place so that I can bring these all over the sewing machine and then run a seam down at each of these joints. And this will then create a pipe pocket um, partially along the fabric so that I'll get the drape running from point to point. You can see again how the magnet provides a guide so that I know I am uh, creating enough space for the pipe to fit in. Now we can take this outside and start putting the pipes in. We have all these pipe pockets along. We can slide the pipes into the pipe pockets. Now to hang this up, we're actually going to use a little stainless steel loops that bolt on. And I have uh, self-tapping screws that go into it. It took actually a little bit longer than I was expecting to put all of this together. The, the awning took almost as much more work as the rest. Uh, but I was very, very happy when it was on, especially with all the, the stainless steel loops. They, they go up pretty well. Now we need to hang up all of the cabling that the awning hangs on. And for that, we're putting in eye screws um, all the way along this. So there'll be basically two tracks running from end to end, and they'll be separated in the middle. So uh, it'll be split into two tracks that are too long. We're using an eighth inch stainless steel cable, and I'm using Nyko Press Klimps, crimps, clumps. Clips, <laughs> crimp clips, to hold on to uh, the tensioning device, uh, and so this will then allow me to pull this cable nice and taut. Um, yes, I really like Nyko Press. It just makes everything so much simpler and cleaner, and uh, just looks a little more professional. So you can see how this will then go in, and the turnbuckle will pull these together, keeping them nice and uh, and tight. Now before putting on the Nyko press, I actually hung clips all the way along the line. And so now I can bring the awning up and actually clip it into all of these clips. And these will then slide on the cable. So when not in use, it can store off at the end. And then when in use, I can pull it back out. And that way, if there's a windstorm or something like that, they can be stored, um, actually storing them in the middle and then pulling them out to either end. And they actually go really quickly and easily. I ended up putting a rope on either end to make it easier so if you're not as tall as I am, you can still reach them. Now the last thing is they didn't stay at the end, and so I got some magnets that I can put in with screws onto the beam, and these magnets will then hold into the pipe on the pipe pocket. So when I pull them out, they'll go click, and it all holds it right into place. I'm very, very happy. And uh, I really like how these came out. It's a very simple thing just to pull them out, set them into place, and when not needed, they slide right back in. And this has made all the difference. We've spent so much time out on them since having this. It uh, really works out well, and I am I'm happy, really, really happy. So there you have it. This has been uh, this has been a fun one. I know there's a lot of other things I want to do to it. I, I really want to get rid of these and put in six by six uh, timber frame corner braces. And there's a few other things like that that I want to do along the road. I just didn't have time to right now. We want to get it out so we family can enjoy the backyard and have a good time in here. And there's a bunch of other little things like that I'm going to do. This is just a, a quick project to use some extra timbers that I actually had lying around. 
and uh, get this done because we've got summer to come out here. So I hope you like this, a very different build, something that's uh, not normal. But if you did like it, please let me know in the comments below. If you didn't like it, let me know that in the comments below. I'm sure I sparked a whole bunch of uh, discussions and things of people saying you need to do it this way, you need to do it that way. Let me know those down below, I'd love to read those. So if you didn't like this video, just hang on, we'll be getting back to the drawer build next week. But uh, until now, we got a pergola and some shade and can enjoy the backyard. I wanna say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Without you, uh, things like this would not exist. So thank you for that. The members here on YouTube who've clicked the join button, the patrons on Patreon, you guys are making Wood by Right what it is today. And without you, this would not be here. So thank you. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Pergola. Per K, par K, per go. Pergola. Pergolola. Perkela logoga. Pargalo.